T-Series is about to overtake PewDiePie as the most subscribed channel on YouTube. And what I think is most remarkable about all of this is how much of the YouTube community has rallied around PewDiePie. People subscribe to him in record numbers in order to stave off the inevitable changing of the guard. They even campaign to get others to subscribe to him as well in their hometowns. Now, sure, PewDiePie does represent the regular person, while T-Series is a faceless conglomerate, but I think a good chunk of the support has to do with Felix's personality and charisma. Now, I've covered the basics of his rocket-fueled YouTube success in an earlier video, but in this one, I want to explore how Felix's on-screen charisma has developed and become more genuine. How he's remained so well-liked even in spite of several media scandals, and hopefully to point to some ways that you can learn from his evolution. First off, the very basics haven't changed. Pewds is still a master of capturing attention. In the first few seconds of most of his videos, you'll get something that's big, and even when it starts a little bit slower, it's usually just a ploy. <laughs> he also still has eye-catching thumbnails and admittedly clickbait titles. Now, I talk about this more in the previous video, but here's an example of expert-level clickbait. T-Series is just a few subscribers away. Red alert. Red alert. I'm calling upon my last trick I have up my sleeve. The one thing that can stop T-Series. Book review. Bye. Thank you for suggesting an actual good book. <laughs> the next book I want to talk about is Japanese Deaf Poems and Haiku. What is it called? It's a really long title. Clickbait on YouTube is no surprise, but what is surprising is how quickly you want to forgive him when you're watching these videos. The clickbait doesn't seem to matter. In fact, I watched the entire book review and still enjoyed it. Part of the reason that PewDiePie gets away with this clickbait, whereas others might be punished for it, is that he is self-aware. In fact, so much of his humor these days is self-referential, commenting negatively on his own content, for instance. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Finally done with this crap. Stupid idiots are gonna love this shit. <laughs> or poking fun at some of his own selfish motivations. TikTok videos. That's right. How many more videos am I gonna milk from this? As long as one monetizes! I need that TikTok ad revenue! It's like they give it to you and take it away! Anyway guys, let's react. And in some cases, teasing an entire genre of YouTube video. In this case, the you laugh, you lose challenges, all while still participating in it fully. Welcome to Scottaru Fluridu, YouTube's favorite show where I laugh at memes, or pretend that I'm not supposed to laugh at them. We have a great time here. This points to a very important pillar of being charismatic while still being genuine people are much more willing to forgive and even embrace your flaws if you've already acknowledged them and poked fun at them. When you get defensive though, you actually make yourself more of a target, which is why when people are teasing on you or ragging on you for a particular trait, sometimes the best thing to do is just to own it, to crack the best joke about yourself. Kevin Hart actually does this with regards to his height. I still, until this day, I'm big on self-deprecation. Anything that the person thinks that they can say, I disarm you of it, by saying it myself. By taking the power away. I did it in all of my stand-up, so you yeah. can't address it anymore. In movies, what you might think to say, I'll say it in a line so it's addressed, and then from that point on, you forget about it, it's done. Now, an important distinction for self-deprecating humor is that you have to have already truly embraced and have compassion for your own flaws. Otherwise, people can sense it. If you're teasing yourself from a place of self-loathing, that loathing becomes contagious and people dislike you. But if you tease yourself from a place of acceptance, other people tend to accept you as well. Again, here's Kevin Hart talking about that. This is it, this is, this is what I was given. This is my playing card. If we was playing poker, I gotta make this hand work. Yeah. This is it for me. And this is what I'm gonna ride out. So how do you not embrace it? Bringing this back to PewDiePie though, his willingness to go after himself and acknowledge some of the lower points of his YouTube career makes it so that people can laugh along with him and be less likely to hold anything against him. Time for me to review YouTuber apologies. That's right. For some reason, I thought this was a good idea. You know, I made a few apology videos. Just a few of them, just a couple. Another shift from PewDiePie in the last few years has been a greater focus on content that he actually likes while spending a bit less energy on content that will maximize views. Now, don't get me wrong, the clickbait is still there and it's still going strong. But rather than create vlogs that burned him out or skits that dominated his entire day, 
PewDiePie has shifted to comedy that comes more naturally to him. You might not be a content creator, but the same is true for you as well. If you're cracking jokes so that other people will like you, it's likely to come off as tryhard. But if you're saying them because they genuinely make you laugh and feel good, paradoxically, people will tend to like you more. And now in his case, it's a habit of saying the opposite. And it's actually a technique that you can use to have more fun in any of your interactions. Here's some very simple examples. What makes the perfect YouTube apology video? A couple things, there's a couple things. Number two, what you wanna do is shift blame. Shift blame whatever you could do, okay? Never take responsibility. Never admit that you were wrong. Rule number one, actually, that's rule number one. As simple as this may sound, when you upset someone's expectations by saying the polar opposite of how you really feel and then playing that up to absurd standards, people actually will laugh. If you try this in your next interaction, you can inject a bit of fun into your day. Now, the last thing, which is more of a high level point, is that Felix seems a little bit happier. And I believe this is because he stopped chasing fame as much. Now, it's very common for people to spend their late teens and their 20s trying to make a success of themselves. And when they get some of that success, it's easy to feel like you're stuck in a hamster wheel trying to maintain and grow that level of success. You have clients to think about, you got your social circle, and in PewDiePie's case, his entire audience of tens of millions of people. We feel like if we were to drop what made us successful and instead pursue our genuine interests, which may have changed over time, all of those people who depend on us would revolt. We'd be left alone. And we're partially right. When we start doing what we love, some of those clients, friends, some of that audience will disappear. But if we keep doing what we love, we stand a chance of making something that our joy can infuse. And when we're genuinely happy, it becomes infectious. Which is why I think meme review has done so well for PewDiePie. Not just because memes are popular, but because Felix genuinely loves them and that's palpable. Hello, bitch lasagna. What does he think lasagna means? <laughs> Here, let me serve your bitch lasagna. Bitch lasagna, bitch lasagna. T-Series ain't nothing but a bitch lasagna. So all that to say, in the short term, pursuing what you love might cause a dip in the reactions of other people. But in the long term, it's the only way to do work that inspires you and keeps other people engaged. So when it comes time for you to choose between the slow demise of pleasing everyone, whether it's in your career or your social circle, and the immediate risk of pursuing your own happiness, I recommend that you take the second option. You might not be number one forever, but you'll be happier, and probably so will the people around you. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I just wanted to make this as sort of an homage to PewDiePie as he gives up his number one spot, at least in subscribers, if not in our hearts. And if you guys did like this video, make sure to go ahead, click subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos that we do. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next week.